react to Lagavert. Lagavert. The many missteps of Lumen City. Lumen City is a furry YouTuber who, at the time of writing, has amassed a subscriber count of around 1,500. They uphold themselves. So this is like drama within the furry community. The furries are debating each other. This furry is a problem with that furry. And that furry is a problem with that furry. You'd think given that they're all gay and dressed like dogs, they would be more united than the average group of people. But as it turns out, they have a lot of infighting and issues. As a furry diving deep into how the fandom works, from how they came to exist, became popular, and the current news about furry art, fursuits, furry conventions, and LGBTQ involvement. However, recent information coming to light would paint a different picture. A picture of some- It's crazy this person gets around so much too, this Lumen City person, because they have like a thousand subscribers. Like they're not like a very popular person. And despite that, they've managed to like piss off like Blue Falf, which is like one of the most famous trans furries of all time. Their other friend, I can't remember their name right now. I talked about them in the video. This guy with 50k subs, probably one of the bigger furry commentary channels. Um... One of the guys that I actually, listen, this guy beta data a lot of, this guy, well, his channel got a lot bigger. He used to be in the commentary community a long time ago. He was like the furry commentator. I thought, I thought he would have made a video about it, but it looks like he didn't. But I expected that he would have. But uh, this guy had this one video that blew up. It was like, yeah, this video, like, this guy had like so few subs back in the day. And then this video like really put him out there, I remember. Um, like 2017? Furry. Yeah. yeah, April 2017. This is how like, this is how my channel looked back in the day too. Every commentary channel looked like this. The furry community. Fur a fit. Oh my god. Not with, not with the dog usually. Usually it wasn't a dog. Doing with my life. So I decided to pull a spare Kleenex and make another seven levels of being a furry. HD remix. Or in this current case, Dante's edition. Every commentary channel was like, like just a robot kind of looked the same, but not exactly. But it was like blurred stock footage or blurred gameplay. And then it was like the little PNG tuber guy on it. And then it was like pictures popping up. I mean, this is what my videos look like back then too. Mine is the furry stuff. I mean, if you look up, uh, man, we're going to go deep on this one. <laughs> I wish my voice was deeper right now and I wasn't sick, so there could actually be a real comparison instead of me literally sounding 14 years old. But if you scroll back far enough, you will find, uh, dude, you will find some. Sh I'm trying to look for like a great example. So, Mr. Or, Enter, uh, any further, I want to ignore that you would see it. I okay, yeah, we get the idea. I don't think we need to watch any more of that. <laughs> Anyone unable to respect personal boundaries, both on and offline, to a point it's downright worrying. From stalking notable members of the fandom at conventions, to acting on grudges with those he holds contempt against. While he's a relatively small creator, his actions have garnered him a sizable amount of infamy among members in the fandom, accruing a number of accusations that leave a lot to be desired. This is a video where I'll be giving you an extended overview of Lumen City, the content he creates, how- Why does he talk like that though? Why does he talk like he's like, uh, I wouldn't say it's the e-boy voice, it's like the annoying professor voice. Why is he talking like that? It's not even his voice, it's the cadence. It's the cadence, ladies and gentlemen. We don't need to do, we don't need to talk like this. It's unnecessary. How he conducts himself and a number of his more infamous actions in an effort to show you how you shouldn't interact with the furry fandom or any fandom in all honesty. And I think the best thing to do would be to introduce you to what Lumen was most known for the content he uploads onto YouTube. For those who aren't familiar with Lumen, you might be wondering what type of content is made on his channel. My question is why is the, if you're using the gameplay, why is it on top of a background? Just use the gameplay. Looking at the description. I mean, it's, it's basically a static background Lumen with some City. lighting effects. Like why not just zoom in a little bit? What does this do to help? It makes it just look worse, in my opinion. Can be summarized as a furry news channel although I would be more inclined to describe him as a commentary channel. This is because, similar to my content, he creates videos commenting on drama or other topics that arise in the furry community. But unlike myself, he primarily uses a short-form approach to his content, aiming to give you a synopsis of an event as quickly as possible, to varying results. What I mean is that sometimes he can run through a topic so quickly that his words can start to mix together audibly, making him more difficult to understand. Oh, yeah, furry animal abuser furry best known for the first suit's blonde bulk. <laughs> I think, uh, I think they're just like autistic, genuinely. I get criticizing them, but I think they're literally like, have, they literally like have autism or something. I think they literally cannot help themselves but talk like that. Because it's not even like they're just talking too fast. They're like tripping over their own words constantly. They can't even, they can't even do the Ben Shapiro thing like me. So, I don't know. Didn't you meet these people? I didn't meet these people. I met Lumen City, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a funny interaction. 
How's eighth grade going? Really good. Thank you. Okay, it's time for the more 2023. Did it succeed like that? Furthermore, as a freak match in the Baltimore metro area that began in 2013, relocating to the Washington metro area in 2015. In 2019, it peaked at 1,000. Dude, no one, I get, I did just say he can't help himself, but it is literally impossible to understand what he's saying. You have to like listen to it and then like think back about it in your head to like reinterpret it. The subtitles help a little bit. 487 attendees. And in 2020, just before the COVID-19 pandemic, saw 1,466. Along with that, sometimes his videos can feel less like the furry news. <laughs> that fit is crazy. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, dude? What was that? 166. Along with that. What is this? What kind of flag is this? This is the trans one, right? What is this one? What is this? Can anyone explain to me what this is? I've never seen this before. What are they wearing too? Like they have like a dog mask, glasses, googly eyes, and these gloves and this thing. That's the catch all pride one, is it? I didn't know, have I like never seen a pride flag? I didn't think it looked like that. I thought the pride flag was just like a rainbow or something. I don't, I, what is what is this thing? Sometimes his videos can feel less like the furry what is going news. on? And more like Lumen taking jabs at creators or people he just doesn't agree with. An example of this hey, would be the video he cool. created in that's June 2022 titled My whole life. Beta Ada Delota is Furry YouTube. By what the title would lead you to believe, this video doesn't really touch on anything Beta has done that has resulted in the Furry YouTube creator space being made worse. The main criticisms presented in this video are Beta's switch from edited videos to stream highlights, Beta's usage of suggestive thumbnails, and how Beta blocking Lumen on Twitter shows that Beta thinks little of smaller creators. I noticed that Beta uploaded a video that had a suspiciously similar thumbnail to a previous video. When I checked, this was true. I made a tweet <laughs> highlighting this with no ill will to the creator. He responded, which resulted in engagement from the tweet. Did you steal his thumbnail? Hold on. I didn't notice at the time, but shortly, true. I made a tweet. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Creators. I noticed that Beta- I don't, I don't understand, so- uploaded a video that had a suspiciously similar thumbnail to a previous video. When I checked- Oh, a previous video is just, it's his own video. He reused his own thumbnail, who cares? I thought I thought he was saying he like stole his thumbnail, but instead <laughs> he's just lazy and reused it. I mean, I guess it sucks, but like whatever. He can let his own channel die if he wants, right? I this was true. I mean, his brain is falling out. Yeah, the speech is uh, they turn the speech down in his stats, but he's actually a genius. You just can't tell. No ill will to the creator. He responded, which resulted in engagement from the tweet. I didn't notice at the time, but shortly after his tweet, he decided to block me on his account. I don't know if I insulted the creator because I tried reaching out to them only to never get a response. You might be seeing a pattern here. But he doesn't care about small creators actively pushing them away. I believe he knows his YouTube career slowing down due to lack of effort being put into his videos. In order to combat this, instead of making better content, he's getting fans to harass small creators on his behalf. Given his recent actions, you might think this is a secret chat the creator runs which facilitates its harassment. However, it doesn't matter if it exists. This person is literally impossible to listen to. <laughs> he needs to stop chewing on cotton balls during his recording sessions. He needs to take the ball gag out of his mouth. <laughs> Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Captain Butt Sex. Excuse me, Captain Butt Sex. I think it would be for the best if you, uh, didn't allow your boyfriend to rail your ass while recording YouTube videos. Just wait until right after. <laughs> just wait until right after, okay? Please. That would, that would really help a lot, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, okay? You know, you want to criticize beta data a lot of... I'm going to criticize your content a little bit. I think it would be for the best if you stopped having gay sex while you record. Just me. Maybe that's just me. Because he's created a culture among fans that creators who try to critique the channel are met with harassment. There was no pattern built up to this accusation. Lumen poop maxing. Yeah, maybe Lumen took a trip to India and just has so much human feces in his mouth he can't speak. That's understandable. That's completely understandable. That's what happens to me every day. I can't stop smoking. <laughs> I can't stop smoking human <laughs> <laughs> Speak with food in your mouth, you sound like him. Hold on, let's let's try this. I'm trying to get a big bite. Hello, welcome back to the Chicken Slime Sounds. What are we gonna be talking about? Yeah, I guess you're right. You you got me, dude. He mentioned beta in a tweet about how he reused a thumbnail he used months ago, got blocked for it, and took that as beta sending hordes of his fans to harass smaller creators criticizing him. This harassment is alleged with no form of proof, no DM sent to Lumen, no testimony from another creator. Not even something as small as the reply to the- <laughs> What is with this like stock footage of a homeless guy sleeping on the sidewalk? What does this have to do with anything? Why is this here? Tweet, which are about as tame as one could get on- Yeah, I mean, it's literally just people saying like, you're wrong. Are five tweets like harassment? I think Lumen City is genuinely just like a, a, like a deranged autist or something. The funniest thing they did is, uh... <laughs> Running into someone's hotel room to like creep shot them and then run away. That is perhaps the funniest thing they've done. Um, don't really support that action. 
Unless you get the good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Unless you post it. Unless you send it to me. No, I'm just kidding. Unless you email it to TurkeyTownBusiness at Yahoo.com. Just kidding. It's meta ironic. Oh my god. But that is the funniest thing they did. And I, I talked about that in uh <laughs> in my video. Let's see here. Yeah, they say stop filming me. Yeah, this is where I talked about it. It's pretty pretty keck. You guys may remember. We started a GoFundMe to sue Valid Els, which didn't go much of anywhere. The story goes that Trip and Blue Falf met up and decided to go to Trip's hotel room at, at a furry convention. Not the one I was at, just a different unrelated one a while ago. And they decided to go to the hotel room to hang out. Lumen City apparently followed them, went into their hotel room, took a photo of Trip and Blue with his phone, and then just ran the out of their like the flash which is obviously a very strange uncomfortable uh not normal thing to do you know running into someone's hotel room which is a private <laughs> space to take a picture of them with. now to be clear this allegation is made because uh trip claimed it happened and then there's a conversation between <coughs> Fulf and lumen city where lumen city says that it happened so <laughs> i mean you can say it's an allegation but like if the person involved said it happened, unless there's some really wild miscommunication going on, it seems like it did. Did he break in with a YouTube fit on? Hard to say. This is what he was wearing uh, when I met him. You can see him here. This green fit right here. Yeah, that fursuit. But they didn't have their hat on or their fur head, whatever the f On Twitter. <laughs> but even with how Lumen goes into detail with each point, all but one of these main points really feed into the thesis statement of beta for YouTube. The only statement I believe had credence was one that I also criticized Beta for previously, his usage of suggestive, sometimes fetishy thumbnails. This one is just disgusting, dude. Beta Data Elada, what's going on, big guy? This is uh, this is a bit foul. Does that really need to be out like that, dude? You could have done anything else. And also, do we need to have like the dragon, the dog, or is this a dog? I don't know what these are. I think this is a dragon, this is a dog. Did you need to have them in the thumbnail is that really necessary dude i feel like you could have just done literally anything else other than that furries really are degenerate sometimes sometimes you'll be caught off guard and think they're normal and then you remember that they like people that sorry they like like humanoid dogs that f each other i'm not even saying they're like zoophiles because not all of them are it's just like what's going on big guy but then some of them make fire youtube videos like your movie sucks and is like an interesting person so it's kind of a conflict there you know but maybe that's how they feel about me um you know you know if you know you know this video was brought to you by G Fuel, the world's leading energy drink brand. They sell these little tubs of powder that you can mix with water and then just get going. It's that easy. It's got an amazing taste. It's clean, caffeinated energy that will keep you laser focused while watching skibbity toilet videos all day. And there are 40 servings of this stuff in every single tub. So it's a lot of bang for your buck. And right now for March, it's G Fuel Madness where you can buy one tub and get another one absolutely free. They just sent me this Naruto Sage Mode G Fuel, which is excellent. And I've also got my personal favorite here, blue ice which is uh, just a great flavor mixes with water really well and like once again like it tastes great and the best part about it is there's no crash or jitters after i drink it don't be a loser buy g fuel today with my link in the description below and in the top comment so you can get the best powdered energy on the market and so they keep giving me money i uh i like that a lot thanks for watching back to the video but even then, that was a popular criticism of him, one that he would listen to as he moved away from using them, even before this video was posted. So because his other points were either heavily opinionated or didn't have the proof needed to substantiate them, the video came off as a jab towards Beta, regardless of the opening disclaimer. As a result, the video wouldn't perform all too well, even garnering criticism from myself as well as a few contemporaries of mine. We would express our cooked. issues with his coverage to mixed results, from a respectful disagreement to labeling a user as an immature beta fanboy for finding the video to be with beta. Him. Even oh, I thought they meant like them in a community <laughs> post. This I read that as beta male rather than like beta data a lot of, which I think is funnier. The idea of like a, an estrogenic furry calling someone a beta male, I like that a lot actually. I think it's cool. It did end with women saying he would be taking time to reflect on this fallout. So one would assume he looked things over and realized where he went wrong here, right? He would realize videos with faulty information made through the haze of a petty grudge wouldn't perform all too well, right? In July of 2023, I found myself in a bit of an altercation on Twitter. I've mentioned it in a previous video of mine, but for those who aren't aware, during Anthrocon 2023, her Fox was in the fandom spotlight due to the Fox puppet they made that they would dance around with at the venue. During the convention, I made a tweet joking about the puppet getting cancelled, unaware <coughs> that three days later, Hearth would be facing pushback for their take on Feral Not Safe for Work. This for their take on Feral Not Safe for Work. <laughs> Furry community problems.
they would receive pushback for their takeout if Farrell not safe for work. <laughs> One of the only communities where it's a, it's a consistent problem that people can't stop getting off to dogs. And the part is they're not all like that. Like, the majority of them are like, I mean, they have a weird hobby, but it's like, whatever, right? Like, who cares? But there are just too many of these people that are that are into uh, dogs getting How does that even happen to you? Like, what has to happen in your childhood for you to be attracted to animals in that way? Tom's hand is bigger than his face. He has cancer. But it also means I have a giant dick, right? A lot of minority of furries are into bestiality, yeah. I still argue it's, it's like too... It's a very uncomfortable percent. I'd say it's like, I don't know, 20% of furries or something are probably into that. Like a, a relatively high amount, but uh, yeah. More likely some kind of abuse, but like what, they got abused by a dog? Like, how does that happen? How does that happen to you? <sighs> I need to get a dog on live stream so I can question them. Later resulted in my tweet being labeled as a call to action against her. My past usage of Kiwi Farm is being used to support the claim. <laughs> the nerd skull guy. I remember this guy. This is someone that was like hated on like uh, Blood Sports Twitter back a few years ago. He was always really annoying. I would always see him like, I feel like I saw him in tandem with like Mundane Matt and his his like little profile picture screams Mundane Matt to me, but it's not Mundane Matt. It's just like is kind of the same person. People in chat even know who Mundane Matt is. Do you guys remember Mundane Matt? That's a funny story. Regardless of it having no correlation with the tweet I made. Regardless, this left me as less than favorable in the eyes of quite a few members in the fandom. And with that being the case, Lumen took it upon himself to capitalize on that through the creation of two YouTube shorts. There's nothing wrong with using Kiwi Farmers, by the way. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I understand getting pissed if someone is actively doxing someone, but like the majority of Kiwi Farms is just a site for documenting drama. Like, who cares? <laughs> it's literally just like talk about e-celebrities. Like, it's the same thing that I do. It's the same thing that every commentary drama channel has done for years. It's the same thing that everyone does in in real life too. Um, people just like to gossip. They love drama. They love gossip on every side. Every kind of person loves conflict, right? This is like an obvious thing. I don't think that should be like a controversial take, but people like to pretend they're above drama and they're better than it, which is why they're like Kiwi Farms. Or they just try to say it's like like a, an anti-trans website or something. That's the other thing. Which like, I mean, a lot of the users in fairness are, you know, transphobic, but it's because <laughs> that's like the only place they can congregate, you know? There are a lot of transphobes on the normal internet too. You just don't hear from them because uh, they get, you know, shouted down by the masses. So the only people that you hear that are like going against trans stuff are like Matt Walsh and people like that who are political people. Kiwi Farms is honestly one of the best places to get info on internet retweet. It's the best place. Literally the best. One accusing me of being behind a hate campaign aimed towards Hearth, alluding to it being because Hearth was a furry minority who was popular at the time. Unfortunately, Hearth saw a character assassinations, accusing them of being a off for not criticizing somebody liking not safe for work animal art. They were harassed, sent slurs, death threats, and attacked by Lagofer, a furry content creator with 38,000 subscribers. Furries, especially minorities, have always faced discrimination. They've been subject to character assassination when we get positive attacks. And I've been subject to character assassination when we get social media, especially Twitter. Especially Twitter. Furries, especially minority furries, are most subject to character assassination when the mob just like, that's doing so much coke. Chill out. That accused me of plagiarizing my <laughs> videos with no elaboration on how. They recently got into controversy over a poorly worded tweet about canceling her box and her 2023 puppet. It was about an accusation of punching down when Hearth was accused of being a s. Like a bird sympathized with her death threat and the role the tweet played in it, and disagreed with being the sole reason for their harassment. The defender used a key fire <coughs> to research a bigoted hate speech forum due to archiving criminal behavior. However, they. A hate speech forum due to archiving criminal behavior. What the f are you even talking about? Due to archiving criminal behavior. Plagiarized from the website. Don't believe the Dragon Year video. Likely many others talking about other adword. So I hate this website. It's disgusting. But I'm mad that they ripped it off. This website is disgusting. And that's why I'm mad that they stole their content. Like, what is your problem, dude? He based this claim. Why, okay, why are his hands like... Has anyone noticed he's doing this Archive thing? criminal behavior. However, they plagiarized from the website. Don't believe the Dragon Year video. Likely many others talking about other... Adword. Imagine if every stream I did, I did this. Or is their arm broken? Imagine if every stream I was like... So today we're going to be talking about Kiwi Farms, and Kiwi Farms is a place that bad things happen, and basically if you're on Kiwi Farms, you're a bad person, and they actually plagiarize from the website. What is, what is this? Jazz hands. <laughs> he's asking a question. Oh, he's like, what's the deal with airline food? He's like, <laughs> oh, my bad. I didn't realize it was this thing. Why did I you? He based this claim solely due to my previous usage of Kiwi Farms. A website that I've since disavowed after being made aware that information I pulled from the site led to me wrongfully labeling a member of the fandom as a zoo file. Oh, well, that's your fault, not the website's fault. You just did research. You realize like Kiwi Farms is not like a journalism outlet. It's just to say where anyone can post stuff. The threads are meant to be more accurate. They're heavily curated, but like sometimes there's going to be wrong info in there. It happens.
It's just user generated. So like, sometimes there's going to be something wrong. If you took it at face value, that's not Kiwi Farms' fault. That is your fault. You propagated an unsubstantiated allegation about someone without proper proof, apparently. Like that's not Kiwi Farms' fault. You could say the poster shouldn't have done that, but like you put it on your YouTube channel to your audience, right? That's your fault, not theirs. You can read my response addressing this through the link in the- Oh my God. <sighs> Howdy, I wanted to take time here to address something that was brought to my attention recently. As most are probably aware, one of the sources I've utilized when looking into topics of videos is a website called Kiwi Farms. It's no secret that while the site possesses a multitude of archive links that have made research easier, the site also hosts a sizable number of bigoted users on the platform, leading to cases where the truth can be stressed or information simply fabricated due to those on the site who demean people usually for the sake of being trans. Dude, are you aware that every transphobe in the world uses YouTube.com? Does that disturb you to know that? Does it disturb you to know that everyone who says the N-word uses Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook? Like, would you say, oh, YouTube, man, so many trans... No. Kiwi Farms does have somewhat of a concentrated amount of these people. Because it's a pro-free speech site, right? And you can't say these things on like mainstream platforms, usually without getting banned. So obviously they're going to go there, right? But like realistically, <laughs> it's not that bad, you know? I don't I don't like the fact that they host people's doxes really. Uh, but legally speaking, like I can't really, I can't, I, I can't really argue with it. Like it's not illegal. It's freedom of information. They're not doing anything illegal. I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. Like it sucks. But sometimes people who deserve to get doxed get doxed. They're like Isabella Janky. Or like actual criminals like Carol the Wolf. So like, I don't really care about them. It sucks that Dream got doxxed. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for, uh, you know, Corp's husband. They shouldn't have been doxxed, but like, doesn't Noel actively encourage it? I mean, he certainly doesn't discourage it, but like, I don't know, once again, like it's the internet. Doxing has and always will be a part of it. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do. Description. It's not back on HRT. Yeah, I'm back on HRT. As it isn't that important when it comes to Lumen, as he didn't criticize me for my usage of the site, like most others did at the time. Just like- got doxxed. Yeah, he got doxxed and then, uh. <laughs> This YouTuber like accidentally showed the Kiwi Farms page in his video and like showed his docs and had to take it down. I don't think that's a bad guy. He's just kind of dumb, but yeah, he, he kind of f***ed up. I mean that my video plagiarized a form on the site while alluding that there might be more instances where I've done this. Allegations that can't exactly be argued in the span of 30 seconds. You could label me bringing this up as coping for myself, and honestly, coping I couldn't either. really blame you. I just wanted to use a personal instance of mine to capture a recurring theme among Lumen's channel. A theme of using his platform against furries or creators who have scorned him in the past. A mindset that not only shows in his content, but how he carries himself through the fandom. What is- I don't think there's anything wrong with talking to people. I don't- like, who cares? You can- <laughs> I mean, you're criticizing him right now. I think the bigger problem is just that he's like a freak who like stalks people at conventions and uh, goes into their hotel rooms and takes pictures of them. <laughs> that seems like a bigger issue to me. Both on and off the web. Time frame on the two mad video? That's gonna be a little bit. According to Lumen, he had just recently turned 18 at some point in 2023. I mentioned this due to the reputation Lumen had garnered prior to becoming of age. There's a number of testimonies levied towards Lumen, accusing him of knowingly trying to sneak into 18 plus areas while being underage. I mean, unfortunately, like, that's what kids do. They try to get into bars, you know? I mean, it's, I guess it sucks that he did that, but like, it's hard to really blame him. Uh, I don't know. When you're a kid, you do dumb things, right? I don't like when they lie about their age to get an adult to talk to them so they can expose them, but like, I don't know. This behavior can- It depends on what, it depends on what the thing was. He's seen through his usage of the furry social app, Bark, an application- <laughs> Bark? Wait, this is real? Hold on. No way, dude. A social app for furries by furries. Dude! <laughs> Join 150,000 other furries around the world. They have their own, like, Twitter? That's crazy. And it looks, like, professional, too. They have, like, a nice website. <laughs> That's insane. Chairman. They have all these employees. Wow. <laughs> God damn! Well, they've definitely got their own thing going on, I guess. What else is there to say? He would be banned from in July of 2022. You see, the youngest age a Bark user can be is 16. 150,000 plus furries has got to be a lie. Dude, there are definitely 150,000 furries. At the convention I went to alone, there was like, a, I think a few thousand people. Um, Anthro New England turnout. <laughs> uh, 2023 had 3,500 people. The one I was at, I wouldn't be surprised if it had closer to four. There was a lot of people. However, the app is set up in a way that if a registering user sets their age below 18, then their age will be publicly displayed on their account. This also prohibits minors from seeing the after dark accounts of other adult users, but we're focusing on the public age part for now. As while well, adult users can hide their age, 16 and 17 year olds cannot, letting everyone around them know that they're underage. 
This is done so that other users on the site are aware that they're a miner and will behave accordingly for better or for worse. Lumi I mean, I'd say it's for the best. That's uh, it's for the best that they get labeled a miner so that, you know, instant prospective furries who are trying to uh, goon a little bit don't end up grooming a little bit on accident. I however saw this as a for- Was there any crinkling? Not in public that I saw, but I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them were wearing diapers. There was this point when this like, uh, this like femboy furry was touching up on me in a very uncomfortable way. You can see it in the video. Or fit up. <laughs> I was not having a good time, but I didn't know. I didn't know how to be like, I don't know. Uh, get the f off me. I didn't feel that, uh, I didn't feel that violated. It's like back here somewhere. I was outside when I when it happened. <laughs> Let's see if I can find them. They're like a horse. Yeah, this one. I have both the femboy and the himbo top, and I just kind of changed it up based on how I feel that day. What's the best thing about being a furry? Best thing about being a furry is being able to just watch. They're gonna go be like, yourself. You have like no real restrictions in terms of like what society normally might put on you. I mean, look at me. I'm a giant horse. Like who cares? What's the worst thing about being a furry? Yeah, dude, look at that. Are any bad things? I don't really have. I didn't even really notice they were touching me the first time, and then the second time I was like, wait, this is not the first time this has happened sort of a sort of a voshian thing <laughs> but i don't know i mean they were nice they're just you know touchy gay guy privacy stating so i guess minors don't deserve privacy but at least we can block adults now i get the issue some would have with this method park is an app that shows you whatever furries are in your area Having every teenager's age publicly listed could make it oh, that much easier yeah, for weird. a predator to so find- So it's like a furry Facebook. It tells you like all the furries that are local to you. How epic would it be to download this app and own them epically? Just saying. Not in like a violent way, obviously. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, to, I don't know. I think that would be funny. Thank you, Richter, over time. I'm glad someone gets it. Someone Victor. finally. But sadly, that's just a byproduct of the internet as a whole. At a certain point, you yourself have to learn and practice internet safety etiquette. The app developers can only do so much when it comes to making a healthy environment for their user base. However, things only seem to worsen for Lumen, as he would get his account- Why do they put underage people on blast let alone let them sign up for the site? I mean, I don't think it's necessarily an issue that underage people are going to sign up for the site. Obviously, there is a big sexual side of the fandom, but not all, not all furries, I think, are trying to fuck, you know, each other, let alone dogs or kids, right? Um, other social media allows minors on, so I don't think it's the biggest issue. Like, Facebook allows minors on. Uh, banned for constantly changing his age between 17 and 18. Although he would seem to throw a cab into the mix as well for some reason. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Bark official goes around warning people for a cab. What do you mean warns people? Like they're like, hey, black lives don't matter. You can't say that. <laughs> Is that what's going on here? <laughs> I'm pretty positive that? that slogan had nothing to do with the reason he was banned. But this incident shows that Lumen values anonymity. Is and this run by the, the furry raiders? Are they running Bark? Right to privacy, which is respectable. The problem from that comes from him using that anonymity to lie about his age, something that he was accused <laughs> of doing at furry convention Furry Delphia in 2022. Furry Delphia. A little on the nose, don't you think, with the name there? A little bit on the nose. When it comes I just clicked them out of context, based. Furry Delphia, they have a policy that all staff working for the convention must be 18 years or older, for liability and insurance reasons, of course. This is something Lumen himself is well aware of, as he was told this directly by the convention staff on for liability and insurance reasons all staff must be 18 or older twitter however it's claimed that lumen would attempt to host an inflatable pool toy meetup <coughs> panel at the convention regardless <clears throat> This claim comes in the form of a inflatable pool toy meet and greet panel. What does that mean? What kind of panel is that? Like everybody shows up with like a floaty on in their fursuit? Is there a pool? I don't, I don't, is it, oh wait, I forgot their fetish is like being blown up like a gas blimp. Yeah, this is, this is them. Here's me in a giant lime balloon at the Anthro New England 2023 pool toy panel approaching you for squeaky Saturday. So they're, they're like attracted to inflation. That's, that's, that's. <laughs> That's what this is about. Pyro has entered the chat. That's what this is. Wanna play Fortnite with me? Yeah, I'll play later, Ronald. If you're still around. Uh -huh. Oh no. Ah. And be sure to become a member. <laughs> the fart sound is epic. Based. A Twitter post alleging that Lumen attempted to register for the slot before being rejected. <laughs> Despite the refusal, Lumen would get a friend of his to apply for the slot instead. And upon approval, he would transfer the panel over to Lumen. Looking deeper into this claim, I couldn't really find anything concerning an inflatable meet and greet at the con, at least not in 2022. However, there is an archived tweet from Lumen where he mentions the panel. Here is inflatable pool toy collection for the upcoming Furry Delphia pool toy panel this squeaky Saturday. Does he f them? I assume he f this one, given it's a... Uh... 
it's sort of got its haunches back in the prime position if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> I imagine this one is getting this one's getting back shots daily. The tweet reading, here is an inflatable pool toy collection for the upcoming The Dragon is sick, is it? I like the shark one. That would go that go nice in a pool. I would uh I would belly flop onto it. I wouldn't come onto it, which seems to be the disagreement that me and Lumen City have. Philadelphia pool toy panel this squeaky Saturday. Apart from this tweet, there seems to be no mention whatsoever of an inflatable panel taking place at Furry Delphia 2022. It can be assumed that the staff of the convention caught wind of this and silently axed the panel, but as there seems to be no public proof of this... <laughs> or that the panel was just never going to happen in the first place and they just wanted it to happen. That's probably the actual... That's probably the reality if I had to guess. Now, same in the back of those inflatables. I bet if you take a black light to them, it's a very dark situation. <laughs> if I had to guess. Why is every furry con some name word plays at the autism? Yes. <laughs> they can't just be furry con for some reason. It has to be... Furry Delphia, Anthro New England. What's the other one? Rocky Mountain Fur Con? <laughs> it's gotta be something like that. It can't be normal. Being a furry isn't sexual. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good one. I mean, it's not always, but for a lot of them it is. Let's be real. Don't be dis don't be dishonest about it. Don't be dishonest. Do not be dishonest, bro. Don't be dishonest, bro. You know they're f***ing each other in the wearing dog costumes. Just saying. This portion just remains as an assumption. Regardless, I wanted this to present the reputation he's accused. Why are you so drawn to furries? I find them very fascinating, I guess. They're also just a sub a subculture that seems to always have some like drama or shit going on that I can talk about and make money off of. So that's definitely part of it. Simulated through his furcon attendance. As these testimonies lend credence to the claim that would result in a spotlight being placed on Lumen City down the line. On October 27th, 2022, the seventh in-person iteration of Furpocalypse was being held. Lumen's attendance <clears throat> can be confirmed through a simple viewing of the con schedule. Inflatable finishes are called lunars? No, they're not. Why are they called lunars? What is, is it because like, is it like the inflatable bird, the loon? What does this mean? Or is it because they're crazy? What does lunar have to do with inflating? Oh, ballooner, ballooner. Okay, I get it. Parade blast, James Isaac Neutron is in the building. Panels. An inflatable pool. I'm gonna loon! <laughs> with Lumen as one of the two speakers. Something that confuses me a bit. Is there Canadian? That may be the darkest thing of all. Even Lumen would later admit to being 17 at this time. But putting the panel aside, there would be an incident at this convention that followed Lumen into the upcoming year. But to talk about that, we'll have to introduce the two people Lumen's offense was against. They're even playing like a furry game. Blue Wolf is a widely known person in the fandom. Being a popular trans furry known for their meme posting, as well as the harassment she'd face from Twitter users like Valid Els. This is the person who said they were going to sue Valid Els, by the way, and it just never happened. Um, I mean, I guess they refunded the money, so that's good, but this is the uh, person. Valid Els is constantly trolling these people, too, trying to get them to falsely accuse him. <coughs> I got a DM from someone the other day who was telling me that Valid Els is like a convicted child with a post of Valid L's admitting it on their telegram and it's like obviously this person's trolling you so you'll talk about it and they can get a reaction right a gimmick account previously dedicated to mocking openly trans people as blue was attending for apocalypse in 2022 why is it a, it's a furry game go with a furry they're like uh puss in boots over here by the name of trip back to his hotel room to spend <coughs> time together trip being a furry i've mentioned previously during my overview of capital city Fur this is the situation i talked about i assume con According to Tripp's allegation, as he and Blue were snugging in bed, there would be snugging. a knock at the door. They were snugging in bed. I'm just a baby. I'm stuck in bed with my boyfriend. Tripp's roommate would answer it, only to find Lumen City. He then allegedly pushed past the roommate, <laughs> took a photo of Tripp and Blue with his phone, and then immediately left. Based creepshotter. <laughs> based creepshotter. He's getting them. He's sticking it to the woke mind virus by 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 being a based creepshotter and taking pictures of someone against their will in their hotel room. Trib was furious over what had just happened, sending this message over to Lumen on Telegram. He would make it clear that he wasn't planning to press charges against Lumen for the encounter, but he would make it even clearer that regardless of if Lumen took a photo or not, no one consented to having him barge in like that. He would end the message by telling Lumen to stay away from him or he would get con security involved, blocking Lumen on Telegram immediately after sending this. 
Lumen would also be messaged by Blue, in which he would respond stating that he noticed that what he did wasn't the best idea. Blue then explains that the two were just a bit freaked out by how Lumen found their hotel room to get a picture with Blue, as that <coughs> wasn't even her hotel room they were in. Lumen answered- I like how they admit it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Went into her hotel room asking, <coughs> asking for a picture when you were resting. Wasn't the smartest idea. Got too excited and didn't think straight. <laughs> when you when you get so excited because somebody is resting that you barge into their room and take a creep shot of them. Oh no, you're fine. We were just freaked out how you found us because it wasn't my room. Uh, I don't know. Is it a nude picture? No, but I mean, it's still it's still creepy to run into someone's hotel room and take a picture of them. I mean, they're in private, right? It's not like they're in public just hanging out in a giant fursuit. They're in a hotel room alone. I think it's wrong to barge into their room and take a photo of them. It's like very strange. ...by saying that he and Trip shared neighboring rooms, and he just happened to see Blue Wolf go in with Trip when he looked outside. Now, neither Trip nor Blue would go public about this situation at the moment, as it wasn't until October of 2023 that Trip would come out with a beware post about Lumen, giving a summarized version of the events we just went over. The response to this beware post was a pretty sizable one. There were multiple testimonies in the replies that spoke of Lumen's less than savory behavior. From lying about his age to be in not safe for work online chats, taking photos of fursuiters out of suit without their permission, stalking the owners of the fur groups he got banned from, even sticking his hand in a random person's sticking drink to get the for the out Rizzler. of it Busters. You're so skibbity. You're so phantom, Jax. I just want to be your Sigma. As well as the public. So how did Lumen himself take this? Well, just moments after getting called out by Trip, <laughs> Lumen could be seen in a venting channel so of baby, Discord server, closer in talking the about how he was toilet. getting cancelled on Twitter. That I know you would can't afford, Kaisen that tatted on my shoulder. Would be posting response concerning the beware post, and not too soon after, he would deliver just that. As far as responses to controversy go, this is one of them, I suppose. It's structured very similarly to one of his videos, opening with an explanation before slowly but surely diverging from the topic presented. It opens with an apology to Trip for the distress his actions caused before giving you a taste of what to expect here, saying that these callouts and public shaming are more than furry <coughs> drama. I'm concerned it's being driven by emotions rather than facts with questions being silenced and my privacy being invaded. I'm sharing the full story of my side so people can understand what happened. What any of that meant, I genuinely couldn't tell you. But going on to explain his side, he would start by telling the reader why we're here. Because of Tripp's tweet accusing Lumen of stalking and taking photos of him and a friend without their consent. He states how he was a minor at Furpok 2022 <coughs> who wanted to take a photo with Blue Wolf. Lumen's recollection of events is somewhat similar. Went to their hotel room, which was next to mine, knocked on the door. Sherp opened it, understandably hesitant because I showed up with my phone pointing at them. <coughs> and I didn't get the picture with the blue fall. I understand Sherp's fear and distress of visiting their room for an unnecessary request when they and blue fall were trying to rest. Being neurodivergent for my entire life, I've been aware that my actions can be misinterpreted as malicious. He was merely autistic, ladies and gentlemen. My autism made me do it, just like the cigarettes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the nicotine, uh, was just kidding to me, you know, sometimes it just, it hits you, it hits you hard when you least expect it, you know, it gets you going really, and, uh, I regret to inform that I took a creep shot in their hotel room, listen, the, I've stopped smoking cigarettes, the cigarettes made me do it, ladies and gentlemen, the cigarettes made me think that they were 10 years old, which is obviously way too old for me, I should be going after only 7 year olds, oh my god, not a good excuse in my opinion, <laughs> Judge, you see, it wasn't breaking and entering, it was my autism. ...or two trips. However, they differ in a pretty substantial detail. Where Trip claims his roommate got the door when Lumen arrived, <laughs> Lumen says that it was Trip who answered the door. Despite the fact this doesn't make too much sense, as Trip couldn't be both cuddling someone in bed and entering the door simultaneously, this discrepancy never really goes elaborated on as Lumen then goes on to how he did approach the two. I'm off 36 Zins, my bad. But that he didn't my bad. with Blue Wolf that he was hoping for. <laughs> he would say how he understood the fear and distress Chip felt from Lumen's visit, because being neurodivergent for his whole life, he's been aware that his <laughs> actions could be misinterpreted as malicious. I'm not sure if being a literal neurodivergent minor is the problem here. I thought he was going to say literal retard for a second. <laughs> now that I support that. But 
Let's just keep going. So baby, loon me closer on the Gaskivity toilet. In the next paragraph, Lumen- Hold on, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Um, <clears throat> a little less than 16 candles. Lyrics. All right, you guys are gonna help me out with something real quick. We're going to, uh, we're gonna compose our own song here. Gat song. All right, how am I gonna make this Skibbity toilet? <laughs> how am I gonna make this song Skibbity toilet? I'm gonna start brainstorming while we watch this video. It's important. It's important to me that I do this, okay? He begins to talk about the <laughs> aftermath of the incident, mainly Trip messaging him on Telegram. He gets hung up on the statement of, be happy I'm not pressing charges. Was in that folder? Bro. Literally taxes. <laughs> Quite literally taxes. Saying that it was unclear why Trip didn't follow <coughs> through if he believed he had a case. Even mentioning how there are limited circumstances where minors can be sued. Personally, I'm just not sure what Lumen gets out of mentioning this. A part of me thinks it's Lumen trying to downplay it and create cause for speculation, as he then brings attention- Why are you breathing so heavily? I can't breathe because I have breathing problems because I'm sick and I smoke cigarettes, which I'm going to do right after this. To Tripp saying he didn't know if Lumen actually took a photo with them or not. Using this to say Tripp might have misremembered what happened, even though the telegram message he's quoting was sent the day it happened. But right after that, he goes onto a tangent about his experience being neurodivergent, which has some cohesion given it ties into his reason for why he did what- Alright, I think we get this part. Fursuit? What's the fursuit controversy? Public discussion concerning the callout would die down sometime afterwards, at least until something pretty substantial happened. As it turns out, Lumen was commissioning a fursuit for himself. On December 12th, 2023, a first like maker shit. by the name Shell Sows would post their work <laughs> on Instagram, that being a first suit by the name of Lumen City. Now, given the reputation of Lumen I've laid out for you already, I'm sure you already have a question. Why would this first suit maker agree to make a first suit for Lumen despite his reputation? Business is business. They were just following orders, okay? They were just following orders. Business is business and business is good. Imagine how much money I could make if I owned like a fursuit business. I've been thinking about business ideas recently. My, my most genius idea I think that I've come up with is, okay, how many good female commentary channels are there that are actually good? Not many. I guess there's like Chad Chad. I don't really find her funny or interesting or care about <laughs> what she talks about. Um, she and heads are right, but doesn't really post. What we need, what we need really badly, desperately, is a cute girl who makes commentary videos. But as we all know, women are incapable of giving good commentary on anything. How do we fix this? I'm going to get a cute girl to sit in front of a camera and I'm going to, I'm going to write her scripts for her so they're good. And then I'm going to edit the videos or pay to have them edited or something and then put it out on YouTube and make money off of simps. So if you see a girl get famous on YouTube for making commentary videos and she's cute <coughs> and she's actually based, you can be sure that I am the one funding that, okay? This is going to happen in the next few years. I'm going to make so much money off of it. It's going to be disgusting. It's going to be disgusting. I might know someone that fits exactly what you need. Well, this actually has a pretty simple explanation to it. You see, they didn't know about Lumen's reputation when <laughs> taking him as a client. You see, Shell started working on Lumen's first suit early in 2023, when testimonies against Lumen's actions were pretty scarce to come across. It wasn't until her mentally ill. I mean, I'm not going to make her mentally spread, ill. Which resulted she will be mentally ill when I hire her because that's what you need. And Shell removing women from their... How can a girl be hot if she's not crazy? A telegram group the day after the beware post. Summer, no, Summer's reputation's already tainted. I need someone with a clean record who looks crazy. So what, what, you know, maybe one of the septum girls. But she's going to be like really based, okay? She's going to be like woke on like our issues and like red pilled and talk about like how feminism sucks, yo. It's going to be fire. There was just one problem. I need an SSRI sweetheart to help me out. The first suit Lumen commissioned from her. You probably noticed from the image that I showed. She's too crazy. Destiny will contact her for info. Well, imagine the drama that could come from that, okay? Imagine the drama. It would be excellent. Like, Destiny tries to riz her up. She's like, no, sir, you're a libtard. I do not respect you. That would be epic. That would just like make the drama expand and like she gets like clout off of it. And look, like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a genius. Adia with a Y, no, she's too crazy. And she also already has an online presence and she's probably also like 15 years old. It has to be an adult, okay? She has to have no online paper trail. I know this is a tall, tall order. What about a red-pilled normal-looking hick? No, can't be normal-looking. She has to be like alternative in some way. She has to look like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I would compare her to. I don't know. I've been speaking to a woman lately. Perhaps I'll pitch it to her, but I feel like it might be kind of bad to were you eating that way? Could affect things. I'll think about it. That it was finished. So why did Shell decide you to- You sent me the perfect fit? All right, buddy. Uh, where? <laughs> Am I looking on Twitter? 
<coughs> I can't find this, Gamma. Where did you send this to me? Me? I have a crybaby face? If you're begging for it, I already don't want you to do it. Finish the first two, you might be- Terry Yummy? Uh, Terry Yummy is- Okay, she's interesting. She's an interesting pick. But I feel like- Hold on, let me- Actually, let me look up Terry Yummy. This is the girl that hangs out with Johnny Gilbert and all those guys, right? Uh... Good morning, world. She's not- I feel like she's not alternative enough looking. Much she looks just kind of Like, she doesn't really look emo, you know? Clip it! It has to be- It has to be someone else. Has to look different. To the chatters, volunteering, you must have a reasonable BMI. <laughs> yeah, preferably not not anorexic and also not obese. You can't be fat to do it, okay? You've got to be, you know, Rizzy. Tom's trying to find a girlfriend. Yeah, so true, dude. You got me. It's over. It's over. She looks pissed off at all times. Yeah, you need someone who looks like non-confrontational, you know what I mean? <laughs> Spencer's off the table, bro. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I saw this, um, there was this thing in the comment section I posted that was really funny. When the Max videos came out, it was like, where did all the evidence go? Spencer with an evidence-shaped bulge in her stomach. Gee, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was epic. Thinking. Well, unfortunately, she kind of found herself lodged between a rock and a hard place. So, Shell started at work on Lumen's first suit in February 2023. So, by the time the Beware came out in late October, she was well into finishing the head, and by that point, the suit was pretty much already done. Shell was in a position where they couldn't exactly refund Lumen without chalking up months of work, supplies, and materials as wasted. <coughs> the best Shell was able to do was finish the suit for Lumen and cut ties after he received it. So this is what she would do, to the obvious dismay of Lumen. I'm a personal trainer. If I can get her out of 250, she'll be a good fit. Dude, how tall are we talking? Like, is this like a six foot eight girl? She's 250, I guess that would make sense. Should I pull this up on stream or no? I assume you probably don't want me to do that. Um, no, she won't fit. She, it's, she's, she's too alternative. It's too much. Yeah, it's, it's just too much. I'm sorry. Can't go with her, dude. Got, I, I need, I need someone else. I'm not gonna do it. Following his removal from Shell's Telegram group, Lumen would make a community post concerning the situation. He opened it by saying Shell was receiving harassment <laughs> for accepting his commission due to Tripp's accusation of stalking. While he disavows any harassment being sent Shell's way for this, I can't see I came across any beratement being sent their way, at least not publicly. I can understand how he would perceive it this way as Shell removed him from her chat without warning, but posts I found talking about this made the differentiation that the problem was with Lumen the suitor, not Shell the maker. The closest thing I could come across was Tripp jumping to a conclusion before getting corrected immediately after. Following this, however, Lumen would then take the time to express his disappointment with Shell, saying that she didn't come to him to ask questions. Alright, this, I mean, this is kind of just nothing. We already know the any thing as well, I think. Uh, I'd say we've probably gone over this video as much as I want to. The rest of it's basically been covered in my own video. Um, I mean, Luma City's definitely a very interesting person. I'm curious if they responded to my video at all. Uh... Odin Wolf was tar- Doesn't look like they've said anything. Do they have any other links, like a Odin Twitter, maybe? I assume they do. About... Odin Wolf was terminated by YouTube, outraging many furries leaving Link the tree. silence. However, it wasn't the first time YouTube targeted furries, and it won't be the last, or they may YouTube. have a point. Odin Wolf was a furry content creator best known for the YouTube channel, which- I can't listen to their voice for even one second. Furry Nazi. Ruben Sim wants furries dead. Based. I mean, not based. <sighs> I'd say the saga with, uh, with my furry stalker is probably over. We're probably at the end of it. Um, I found it pretty interesting. I got, you know, sort of- Low-key stalked by a furry individual. I find it funny. Uh, I don't feel, I mean, I don't feel like I'm a victim or anything. I had some people reaching out to me saying that I'm like a victim. I, I, I certainly don't feel like a victim. I don't even think they have the intelligence to understand like why they're such a loser. They seem like they might, they might literally lack the IQ points. They called you homophobic. Where did they say that? I can't find them. How can I be homophobic if I'm having sex with guys all day? What the F? Let me see these on Mastodon. I'm not going to that website. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just can't click on it. I can't bring myself to. This guy's editing makes his voice worse somehow. It does. That's true. I, I just can't go on Mastodon. <laughs> I can't bring myself to do it i'm sorry there's just no way <coughs> it's too cancerous and be sure to become a member for five dollars a month they get the members only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get thanks so much for your support no!